This is BFBS Esports Live with OJ Borge. Well, hello to Esports Live on BFBS, the Forces Station. Um, and it's not just any BFBS Esports Live. It's a Halloween special, so I am OJ Borg. That was terrible. OJ Borg. Yes, anyway. Uh, alongside me is combat medical technician, founder and CEO of Skull Esports, a man known as Joan. Ah! Joan. <laughs> <laughs> it took me ages to think of that, Jonah, you know. Oh, my goodness. It's horrendous. Still, yeah. it's nearly as bad as jokes the other week. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Do you know what? My original intro for you was uh, I was going to call you a one-man boss level and somebody knows the secret of Monkey Island, to which, when we rehearsed this, you've never played Monkey Island. No, I haven't played Monkey Island, no. Only the CFDs expansion. Yeah, yeah. okay. Because uh, it's a game, of, I mean, no one under the age of about 35 will know the reference. <laughs> it was an Amiga game. I remember trying to cheat when I was at school. And that involved somebody giving me about 20 pages of printed out A4 so I could do it bit by bit to, you know, to solve the uh, the puzzles. Anyway, welcome to your home of anything and everything to do with gaming and esports within the armed forces. Uh, one of the things we're doing this season, I love this, is the War Room every Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. That is UK time. We are hosting a gaming lobby. I say we, it's the Royal We. Uh, Jonah is. Um, it is where you can compete against him and others from the Armed Forces esports community. Different games each week. It is Halloween today, unless you're listening it to is. the catch-up, in which case it was Halloween a few days ago. Uh, what are we playing, Jonah? So it's fitting with our Halloween theme and playing Friday the 13th this week. Um, obviously a bit of a spooky game. Uh, someone will be playing Jason and running around the map trying to find and hunt down the survivors. Um, and the survivors obviously trying to escape. Um, so yeah, another exciting game to play and definitely going to lose this one yeah probably you, you seem to have, you've lost all the ones you put on so far which seems yeah no. a little sad uh, how do people get involved in the lobby so quite simply search uh, during the public if you go in the public search of the game and search ace anvil uh, on there you can find my lobby and uh, join in there um, we have a few people already lined up ready to join so jump in grab a spot and try and run away from me absolutely please do join in uh, we're also going to speak on this episode to Ashley Wharton the vice chair of the Royal Navy Esports uh, Society and a number of gaming competitions coming up in and out of the forces plus we're hoping to speak to Jeffrey Pierce somebody who I worked with years ago uh, the voice of characters in games such as The Last of Us The Reckoning and Call of Duty Ghost World War 2 is Jeffrey Pierce he's a wonderful chap Now, Ashley Wharton oh, is the Royal Navy's Vice Chair of Esports. Ashley, I can't think of one so far. I've not been able to come up with a Halloween version of your name. Do you have one yourself? Oh, I don't know. No? Okay. <laughs> not at all. It might come to me before 7 o'clock. The only thing I thought of, if you ever need a new, and maybe you've used this already, if you ever needed a new gaming name, uh, your name is Ashley Wharton. How about the Warthog? What is that a reference? I, you know, I've actually tried that before. I've tried a few variations of the name, but... Um, yeah. The one thing that irritates me is it's WH, not WA. If it was WA, I'd be more inclined, but I just uh, can't find anything that works in that way. Oh, but, I, listen, I, I mean, I'll probably I'll probably get Warthog with WH if I spell it that way, but nah. Just, I've tried a few variations of it in the past, and I just don't like them. So. Give it a go, Ashley. Anyway, you're here to talk about uh, Navy Esports. Uh, first off, let's start with Code Bowl 4. Um, not too long ago, was it your first time in LA? It was my, it's my first time in America. So, really? Yeah. Okay, so what a thing to go over for. What was the experience like going over there? It was it was great, really. Um, especially myself that's never been over to America before. Um, Activ the team at Activision were absolutely fantastic. Uh, squared us away entirely. Um, food, accommodation, travel, whatever we needed, really. There was always somebody on hand any hour of the day to sort us out. We knew exactly where we needed to be. And then we had quite a bit of free time as well to go out and explore and do a few other bits and pieces. Um so that was that was good to be honest. It wasn't completely full on twelve hour days. There was bits and pieces where we actually managed to get out and see a little bit of LA. So it was good. It wasn't twelve hour days. Was it even an esports event? I mean Jonah will back me up here. If you do anything in esports, it's a minimum of twelve hours, isn't it normally Jonah? Yeah, I mean it depends on the event, but yeah, I mean, definitely competitions-wise, 12 hours is probably a general average. But yeah, I mean, I've been in ones as long as 24, 48 hours. I mean, Insomnia is literally named Insomnia for the reason yeah. that you're up for that long playing games. But yeah, but anyone who's been to Insomnia knows that uh, sleep deprivation, you know, especially being in the military, uh, you know, we're sort of used to it by that point. <laughs> yeah, you guys have nailed it. That's why you've got a head start on it. Uh, how did yeah. the Royal Navy Esports do, Ashley? Um, we finished eighth, which isn't bad compared 
considering we finished dead last last year um we had a few connectivity issues last year but um no issues this year finished eighth um which was an improvement but the team that did win um the royal canadian air force were incredible yeah, uh, yeah they're untouchable um th- most kills in every game and they didn't win every game but they put enough kills on the board to be able to boost their score and i think they won by about 40 kills in the end um wow. and it was just yeah that the, nobody was touching them they, strong, they were they very, were pretty incredible to be honest very strong performance i know um it was the first time they'd been on one of these code bowls as well they did very very well um let's talk a bit more about your role as the vice chair of esports of the royal navy how long have you been in this role uh so i've been in this role since uh, the agm last year so june july last year so 14 15 months now like the other like the other services it seems like the royal navy very much getting behind esports Oh yeah, no, entirely so. Um, we're hoping to be able to hit um, affiliated sports status soon. Um, so we're going through the process now to get ourselves onto the affiliated sports and hopefully, um, probably just after the new year, we're hoping that we'll have some more clarity as to if we get that recognised status. How long does it normally take to get affiliated? Um, there's two boards that sit in the year, so it's it, it really just depends, but we are putting the legwork in to try and get it. We're hoping, as I say, to be done by um, by February, hopefully. Uh, but we've been having this conversation now for for quite a quite a significant yeah. amount of time, to be honest. I think it's the same with the Army, really. The, the, the Army's been pushing for esports to become an official Army sport for the longest time. But obviously there's the controversy that, that doesn't take any physical exercise, blah, 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 blah. But the mental toll and like the strategy and everything is all so, I don't know, it's exhausting. But anyone who's played in any type of competitive competition within esports, arguably it's, you know, on the brain, it's more exhausting than other sports, in my opinion, anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you would agree with that, but there's definitely the stand that the army is taking that because it's not a physical sport, you know, the mental toll, they don't, People who don't take part in esports don't get that sort of aspect of it. But yeah, if you do speak to people that play games, um, people are going to have such a great mental capacity for it because they're going to yeah. understand the macro. They're going to understand, like my game is League of Legends, and I know champions. I know their stats. I know how their stats build. I know what abilities they use, how much damage, what items I need to build, and then I understand all the different play styles that I have to do to counter like counter different champions and different play styles, and how that. Like the amount of mental capacity that somebody has to be able to process all that information is great in a work environment. Probably not on the physical side, and I get that entirely. But the absolute intelligent, the, the absolute just bottom line intelligence that somebody has to have to process all that information that quickly exactly. really lends itself to roles such as weapons engineering or cybersecurity or the intelligence branch. Like there are a lot of people that could be pickpocket it out we've got people that just code in their spare time and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things a lot of like hardware and software stuff as well and it's just like you know all those transferable skills you're not going to get that in football but you get that in esports because that's the kind of people that we have playing games yeah we've got people that don't do that but we've got a lot of people that that do so well it's a great shout and for people who don't think that the esports is difficult have a crack at league of of legends i mean i hosted a couple of events (laughs) and i was lucky enough that riot who made the game uh took me and they gave me a they gave me a coach and they were like right we're gonna teach you the game it's gonna be great and i did hours and hours and hours of it and i didn't even scratch the surface of being able to really understand the game beyond knowing what is a mid laner and what's a jungle and the rest of it Uh, still with Jonah Jupp and also our guest who is from the Royal Navy, the Vice Chair of Esports, that is Ashley, the Warthog Wharton. Um, mate, thank you so much for staying with us. Um, I didn't ask you this before, I wanted to work out, what esports teams does the Royal Navy have? Because I, I, you've got loads, haven't you? We have, yeah. So World of Warships, League of Legends, Call of Duty, Rocket League, uh, Overwatch, Counter-Strike, this goes on. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be here, I'll be here for hours if I go through the list and yeah, you delve s- down into the weeds. Yeah, you sort of feel that you know, being the Royal Navy, you should be good at World of Warships. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I um, casual, I've casually played. I played four or five years ago, and I touched on it about six months ago, just over um, over Easter, and then I've not touched it since. I don't really play World of Warships, but we do have a good collective group of people that do the chair uh, gordon does as well gordon. I, was, I was i was going to mention gordon's name yeah because i remember we spoke to him i think on the first season of this and um he challenged me to a game of it and i was i wasn't you know i did i basically went through like the first couple of rounds the training and the rest of it and um it's a fabulous game but surely if you're from the royal navy you've never been beaten by the other services have you 
I can't say whether they have. Um, <laughs> I've never played any games with the other services, so I can't come, comment on that. Oh, you've not? Okay, then. So, but let's talk about the inter-service rivalry. And I guess this is a question for both of you. How much, mm-hmm. how much is there a rivalry, Jonah? I mean, I mean, if there's a chance of playing, if there's a chance of playing the RAF or the Royal Navy, I mean, surely you want to get stuck in and beat them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, as I've told, said before many a time on the show, like, it doesn't matter who we're against, the, the Navy, the RAF, or anyone else from other countries. We played the US Air Force, US Army many a time. I think there's always that rivalry between the service about who's the better service. Um, the Navy always pulls the excuse of being the senior service, but, you know, the Army always, uh, you know, is quick to to keep them quiet so <laughs> i mean i'm not biased but also the navy does whip i'm not us a lot i'm not biased games, so. but i'm not biased but, but he says, actually. how can you not be biased how can you not be biased but actually i'm sure i have a good argument against that many examples i'm sure that uh he's got uh <laughs> times the navy's beat the army or the raf actually have they is it one of those things that when you do play into service when you get a win over your your opposing services, it must be surely it must be one of the greatest days in esports. It's always nice to to get a one up, but in terms of like people we play against on a regular basis, it is the army and the RAF because when we go for scrims, we play against them anyway. So I don't know if there is that little bit of rivalry, but it is always nice to to win anyway. So yeah, um, yeah it's always nice to get one over, I suppose. What's the community <laughs> like? <laughs> What's the community like within the Royal Navy Esports Society? <laughs> We've got yeah, a good good regular bunch of people that turn up. Um, deployment um, obviously is getting in the way of that, um, especially for the Royal Navy because we've got a long list of people that go to sea for quite a long period of time. But people come back quite regularly, um, and we're we're slowly building the community. But yeah, we're a bunch of lo- lovely bunch of people. Um, got loads of time for everybody, and it's just really nice. We just everybody gets on. We have no real issues yeah. at all. Um, well, is. we have we have no issues. It's just everybody's here to play games and. We're all here for the love of esports. So that's what it is. Uh, last question, and that is if you are on deployment on a ship, can you get a decent enough signal? Is your ping okay to actually play online? No. Uh, <laughs> no. In the word, no. <laughs> no. No, it's yeah, it's it's not it's not really possible at sea um, mm. at, at all. It's just the bandwidth that we've got out there is specifically for operational reasons. So it's it's sure. not impossible to, to nick, play games on. Surely can sea. nick just a little bit, Ashley. Surely just <laughs> a little bit of that operational <laughs> stuff. Um, Ashley, I have to say thank you. Uh, thank you so much for staying with us. Um, we have managed to uh, come up with a name for you, a Halloween name, and that's Gashley Wharton. If you want that. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much uh, to the Royal Navy's Vice Chair of Esports. That uh, is Ashley the Warthog Wharton. Cheers, buddy. Thank you so much. Jonah, how's the war room going? How have you been? How's it gone for you, really? Uh, I mean, do we have to talk about it? I mean, <laughs> I, 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 let's just say it, I, I'm dead. Yeah, yeah. I, it is, it is one of those things. I, I can hardly do two things at the same time. So the fact that you actually game and co-present the show, I think is pretty amazing yeah. every week. Uh, we got time, I think, uh, to do the news. What's the latest esports mm-hmm. news? What have you got for us? Yes, so this week, uh, the Blast R6 Major in Atlanta, Georgia, is taking place this weekend. Everyone is uh, sort of just turning up at the moment. Uh, I'm, I've looked through Twitter over the last sort of hour or so and all the esports organizations are talking, uh, Fnatic, uh, Wolves Esports, all the big R6 names, R6 being Rainbow Six Siege for anyone who doesn't know. Um, they're all turning up now in Atlanta, Georgia and playing the first their first few matches. Um, yeah, the results are looking very varied already. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. But also uh, this weekend we had Epic Land 40, uh, which took place at the Kettering Leisure Village. Um, and yeah, some unexpected winners. So Raptors, um, who we kind of expected uh, took home the first place in this uh, Counter Strike Two um, tournament, and they won two 0 against K10 Esports. And Vex took home the win in a very tight, uh, tightly played two 0 win against MCRP Ultras uh, in the Valorant Grand Final. Now MCRP um, Ultras are a bit of a mixed team. They've got some French players, some English players. Um, yeah, a lot of which have sort of. Uh, Polaris experience. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Fabulous. Thank you very much, buddy. Uh, and talking of CS2, I mean, do you want to admit to it right now? Go on, admit to it. I think I've been converted from Valorant to CS2. He has. He's in. <laughs> He's in with it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely the Space Force. Uh, we're Ooh. definitely going to provide the smoke for them today. And uh, we're definitely taking our trophy home. 